Hi everybody, um, my name's Jared and I'm coming to you today on YouTube to share some things which have been on my heart the past couple of weeks or so. Um, everyone can agree it's been a fairly interesting couple of years and um, you know through all the, the chaos that seems to be going on in the world at the moment, I really do believe that the Lord is, is pouring out His Spirit on His church on fellow believers, warning us of things that are coming, um, warning people of the imminent rapture of God's church. And I'd say for the past couple of years, I have been researching and looking up eschatology quite a bit. I have been watching a lot of um, videos from well-renowned Christian um, streamers about pre-tribulation, post-tribulation, rapture, theologies, about the Great Tribulation, and what this video is not going to be about is is me arguing for post-trib or pre-trib. Um, you know, uh, there's enough of that on on the internet so if you feel like arguing with me about that I'm, I'm just not going to engage after studying the topic which I for the past couple of years I really do feel like um, I stand on a pre-trib rapture and based on what I see in the world today based on videos that I've watched of fellow believers I really do believe that the Great Tribulation's shadow is being cast very, very long, and I really do believe that we're on the precipice of that. And because we're on the precipice of of the Great Tribulation, I honestly do believe that the rapture of the church is imminent. What I wanted to share with you guys today was a couple of really interesting things. Um, two possible confirmations for me that we are close to the rapture, and also um, a dream that I've had recently about the rapture. Now, I would say pretty early on in the year, um, I was putting my children to bed. I have twin boys and a six-year-old daughter. And while I was putting the twins to sleep, um, one of the twins, Ryan, he, uh, he started saying over and over again, we're going up, we're going up. And I questioned him, oh, Ryan, where are we going up to? We're going up to space, he says. And I'm like, who told you we're going up to space? And he says, Jesus. My young fella, he's four. I've never, ever spoken to my children about um, eschatology. I've never spoken to them about the rapture. You know, I, I do my best to introduce them to Christianity, and I do my best to... Uh, to pray with them and I think my wife and I are doing a fantastic job at raising our kids as Christians um, but I found that this was really profound you know I've never wanted to influence you know my children with the possibility of there being a rapture and those type of things I've always wanted a God to speak through my kids and <laughs> without my influence and those type of things. And I just thought that this was profound. You know, the fact that I've never ever spoken to either of my three children about the coming of Jesus or the rapture and those type of things, I thought that this was mind-blowing. And so that got me thinking more and more about, you know, okay, I think that we were possibly on the precipice of the rapture happening. Anyway, so months pass and... For a long period of time, though, I've I've asked the Lord to you know to confirm to me that you know maybe we are actually in the end of days, to confirm to me that Jesus coming is is soon, and uh, um, I I've asked the Lord for for visions, I've asked the Lord for for dreams and those type of things, and um, after a very very long period of time of asking for these things, um, I felt like I I had a dream recently. And um, the Lord has been waking me up um, in the middle of the night quite often recently. And I've taken this as an opportunity to either, you know, wait and listen for him or to just to pray for things that are put on my heart. 
and I was woken up suddenly at about four o'clock in the morning about two weeks ago. And you know, as, as I have been doing, I took the opportunity to pray um, for various things. I fell asleep between four and six again, and I had a very, very short but impactful dream um, that I think is from the Lord, that I think is about the rapture and a possible warning for the church before the rapture happens. In the dream, um, I was standing on a on a country road, and on this country road, I saw a column of cars driving down this, this country road. Now, in the dream, I understood that these cars were packed full of Christian families. And from the dream, I understand that these Christian families were fleeing the cities. Um, due to the climate of the, of the world today and, and the persecution of the church, particularly in third world countries and stuff like that, you know, it's only a matter of time before Western Christians are, are persecuted too. It's only a matter of time before we are, we are thrown in jail for our beliefs. It's only a matter of time um, that we are, um, you know, tortured, killed for our beliefs here in Western society. Um, anyway, so after I observed this column of cars, which I believed were, were Christians in these cars fleeing the cities, I found myself walking in a, a country paddock. Uh it was a semi-cloudy day, really peaceful type paddock. And then all of a sudden I heard a shofar. You know, for those of you who don't know what a shofar is, it's basically just a trumpet made out of a ram's horn. And it was loud. And as I heard it, it felt like my body was just enveloped in electricity, like I was absolutely buzzing. It was like in that twinkling of an eye, you know, my body was changing into that incorruptible body that, that Jesus has for us. At that moment, um, I was so excited, but I woke up, really, really short dream. And I woke up and I'm in bed and I can still feel my body buzzing. It was an unreal feeling, you know. It's, it's one of those feelings like, you know, I, I want more of that feeling. <laughs> I want to experience that and just made me long even more, you know, for, for the rapture for us to leave this place. <sighs> anyway, so, of course, you know, I, uh, I shared this dream with a, with a couple of people and, um, you know, I kind of asked the Lord for a little bit of confirmation to, you know, Lord, like was this from you you know are you coming again soon jesus and uh just last week we were visiting my sister and brother-in-law and i was hanging out with my my niece and nephews and one of my nephews <laughs> decided to go like oh you know adults they don't know everything you know sometimes they they have mistakes and those type of things and anyway i thought I'd, I'd play along with him and i said to him oh well, I'm an adult, and uh, I, think, I feel like I know everything. How about you uh, ask me any question, and I bet I can answer it. Anyway, so one of my nephews then turns to me, and he goes, when is Jesus coming back? And like I felt like this was just another mind-blowing experience and confirmation. You know, I, I've never spoken to my nieces and nephews about eschatology and you know the coming of Jesus and those type of things. You know, obviously my sister in laws doing a great job of um, you know, teaching her kids about Jesus and you know his return one day and those type of things. Um he's seven years old, uh this nephew of mine. And I just found it it was no coincidence that, you know, out of all the questions that my my nephews could have asked me, you know, they asked me, When is Jesus coming back? So I feel like um, the experience I had with my little boy, my four-year-old, telling me that Jesus told him that, we, that we're going up soon, we're going into space. I feel like coupled with the dream that I just had, coupled with this, you know, what I feel like is a very, very God-orientated question from my nephew, I really do feel like we are on, on the cusp of, of, of the rapture. And so, 
I guess this video is it's it's a warning to to Christians and a warning to those who don't know Jesus. Christians first. Those of us who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, we we tend to give up on this world and we tend to just sit there and and wait for Jesus coming and 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 I think there's a tendency to stop being effective. And I think that we, in these times, that we as Christians cannot be lazy in our beliefs. We cannot be lazy with the resources that God has given to us. It is our mandate to occupy this world and to do good in this world until Jesus returns. Even if you believe the, the rapture of the church is imminent, guys, this is not an excuse for us to go and sell our homes, and sell our cars and leave our jobs and those type of things like we need to occupy this place. We need to be that light on a hill. We need to be Jesus' hands and feet in these days more so than ever. Do not leave your job. Do not sell your house. You know, wherever your workplace is, that is where your ministry is. You are Jesus' hands and feet in that place. Use your resources, whatever God has given you, to magnify Christ, to glorify Him, to be His hands and feet. Um, and spend every single day in the Word. Spend every single day, you know, worshipping the Lord in everything that you do, praying to the Lord in everything that you do. And for those who don't know Jesus, um, after the rapture of the church, those who are left behind, the world will enter into seven years of the worst times that the world will ever experience. You think about the world wars, you think about some of the the massive um, environmental catastrophes that we've had, weather systems that have just come through and laid waste to cities and those type of things. It is multiplied by a thousand, by ten thousand. The, tr the great tribulation will be a time where God's judgment will fall upon a world that just hates him. And the only way to to escape that, the only way to find salvation is in Jesus. Each and every single one of us are, are not innocent. We are all guilty of rejecting God. You know, the sin in our lives, the, the selfish behaviors that we choose to live each and every single day have contributed to the suffering of this world and have contributed to the suffering of people in our lives. The Bible says that there is no one good on this planet. And salvation can only be found in Jesus. And here is the gospel. The gospel is God coming down as flesh in Jesus to live the perfect life for you and me, a blameless life, taking the punishment that you and I should receive upon himself, being crucified to a cross and executed. Jesus rose again from the dead three days later and has given us the opportunity to have a relationship with the Father, to be reunited with the Father through his sacrifice if we are willing to accept him and believe in him. I hope that this video encourages some of you. I hope that this video challenges some of you. And I really hope that if you are an unbeliever and you, you've never heard the gospel before, that I, I pray that you would actually consider Jesus in this season. You know, we're about to celebrate Christmas and, you know, it is a... You know, it's time when Christians celebrate the birth of Christ, you know, the birth of our Savior into this world to, to live a blameless life for us, to die on a cross eventually for our sins so that we can be saved. And, you know, Jesus is our righteousness. There's nothing that I could have ever have done to get into heaven. There's nothing I could have ever have done to be right by God except for believing in Jesus Christ. He is my salvation. He is my righteousness. Through Christ alone, we are saved. So um, there's a few other things that I wouldn't mind sharing eventually. I'm not entirely sure if I want to make a YouTube channel. There's plenty of YouTube channels out there um, about this stuff. Um, but I just pray that maybe uh, that even if I don't create any other videos, that this video will be enough for you, the Christian, to be challenged to make sure that you're walking in repentance with Christ, that you are his hands and feet in this world until the day that he calls us home. And a challenge to those who, who don't know Christ that, that you would, you know, 
research him, seek him. And the scripture says, if you seek God with all your heart, soul, and mind, that you will um, find him. So be blessed, everybody. Merry Christmas. And hopefully see you in the cloud soon. Bye.